First of all, 25 years. Nice. Since the, I, honestly, I cannot believe it. And I want to remind you because, of course, why wouldn't you remember? But I was on the original junket for Clueless. Oh, and my God. We, so we spoke, for, we spoke then. And that was obviously the first time I had met, you know, the cast, Alicia and, and the rest of them. And I remember watching that film. So, and it was one that has really stood out for me so clearly because I knew that when I was watching it, it really was something special. How did you feel, you know, at that moment when you had finally kind of released it to the world and it was getting the, you know, the praise and everything that it was getting? Well, it's very weird to me because, um, you know, I had done some other films and, you know, sometimes, you know, you have flops or people are really insulting in the press even if something does well or they ignore it but I always wanted to do something where I would get a little respect yeah and uh, I you know when the movie came out and there were all these reviews and they sent them to me and it was like they were pretty much universally nice and I had never expected anything like that to happen to me in my life and I mean, I still have them in my garage, but uh, it was just like, oh my God, I, you know, if it never happens again, at least once in my life, I got a little respect. And that felt so good. Everybody should have that from something. But Amy, you didn't get that kind of respect from Fast Times because that, that's from another classic. Times, no. um, yeah, nice for you to think so. But um, at the time, they only released it in a couple of hundred theaters. They had no advertising. And then people were liking it and coming back again. So they released it quickly across the rest of the country with no advance word or anything. Yeah. And um, in fact, I, I ran into an executive at, who was at Universal at the time. And he said, oh, you got screwed. Um, so, wow. uh, and you know, there were very few reviews. Um, it wasn't treated like, you know, and of course Universal at the time also had ET. So that's where you're going to spend your energy. Yeah. Um, and uh, no, I mean, years later, people, oh, you know what? That wasn't a bad movie. It's like, well, thanks very much. Huh. That didn't help me get my next thing. And I, you know, so, but I'm glad, I'm glad it's there. I'm glad that those actors were so wonderful and that it did everything it did for Sean Penn. Yeah. And that, Oh, I, mean, I, don't, I don't know. I thought it was, I loved it. I mean, it's a classic as far as I'm concerned. But with Clueless, I mean, why do you think that we all just connected with Cher and her friends and the story? Like, and it's so timeless, as I just said, because it's a, it's a movie that you can show to generation to generation and it still holds up. Oh, thank you. I mean, um, the story, as far as like, you know, what I, used from the, you know, great Jane Austen novel, Emma, mm -hmm. is timeless. I mean, um, I think anybody that likes the movie, I, I beg you to take a look at Jane Austen. <laughs> You'll just be so happy um, because, you know, it's written in, you know, the early 1800s and um, it, there's nothing in it that you don't understand. Yeah. And that doesn't, you know, ring true as far as what you know, it's going through the mind of a young girl and the growth of an adolescent. She's 21, but still, um, it's just so timeless and universal. And, you know, when you're, you know, leaning on giants like that, you got a very good shot of things lasting. Yeah. When you cast that movie, oh my gosh. I mean, everybody in that cast went on to some pretty good things. But Alicia, I mean, we just, we just all fell in love with her. What did you see in her? How did you know that she was going to be the right girl for Cher? You know, I saw her in the crying video. Yeah. Uh, no, yeah, the first one was crying. Yeah. And, you know, then uh, amazing and crazy. But um, when I saw her, I just, my heart, I just like liked her. Um, and I felt like I wanted to make sure things would work out for her. I wanted to take care of her. She, she makes you feel for her. There's mm -hmm. something adorable and vulnerable and sweet. And, um, you know, of course, there are all the things that make her appealing to boys. She's sexy, she's, you know, attractive and, and fun and all of that. But um, it's like Marilyn Monroe, men and women like her. Yeah. You know? 
Yeah. And then you had the foresight to cast a, oh, a young nobody named Paul Rudd at the time, <laughs> who I remember when I saw that movie, I just fell in love with him. Um, something about him. I just, you know, and, yeah. and to this day, he hasn't aged one day. Like, honestly, that guy, <laughs> I don't know what his magic what potion is. But a, a, another mensch and what a, what a great guy he was in that film, too. Oh, he's, you know, I really, really wanted somebody that girls would fall in love with, but not your typical young studly it had to come from his mind mm. and you can't fake that you know when you, you see people walking around a clipboard and saying they're a scientist and you're <laughs> or putting on glasses and acting like they're smart um he has a great mind and it comes through and he makes it sexy yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, I just love watching this movie over and over and I see different things all the time. And of course, you know, there's all this clueless trivia and little things that pop up that people didn't know. But at the end of the day, what were like for you, when you look back at that movie, what was like the, the brightest memory for you or the, the thing that made you just happy? Um, you know, when I would see like, you know, I'd be walking, I'd be walking from the trailers or the studio or whatever, and you'd see where your set was and you'd see the people and, you know, the things that you had sort of brought to it and go, I'm going to that set now with those guys. And I just be like, and that's all I want to do. That's where I want to stay. That's where I want to live. It just yeah. makes me happy. Yeah, it's just, uh, it's like I said, everybody can just watch it over and over and you just see new things all the time and it just, uh, it, it just resonates still. I, I love that movie so much. Um, what's, what's with you now? Well, what are you doing? I know you've done, you've directed some TV, TV series and things like that. So where, what are we going to see you do next once this is all <laughs> over? Um, you know, it's a, it's a whole new world. So who knows what's going to happen? We did an off-Broadway musical production of Clueless that yes. the producers were very excited about. And, you know, just as we were starting to bring in and look for some new talent to add to things and do a little revamping in, you know, hopes of making it bigger, Broadway became like, you know, yeah. who knows what it's going to be and, and how it will come back and what form it will come back. I just saw a virtual production of a, um, Tartuffe where it was like, zoom boxes and they're acting and they're not together well i and find it, that amazing during the pandemic watching people who can do these plays during zoom or and the, the musical things i think this is something maybe you should take that on and maybe do clueless by zoom what do you think well i'm going to be talking to our producer and telling her about that production um you know it wasn't like completely like okay that or great you know this it's like you know, you find a little bit of like oil colors and you go, you know what, maybe if all this got bigger, it could be, we could start making paintings. <laughs> you know, it's a whole new world. It is. Um, and I'm trying to be happy about that. <laughs> yeah. Well, listen, thank you so much for everything that you've given us. I, I know you brought a lot of laughter to my life and to my family's life. That is for sure. And uh, well, I'm I, I just want to say like when, when I did that and the publicity department of Paramount was so wonderful and inspired and had so many ideas. And it was just like, I had never experienced that from other studios. I mean, you guys were like on the ball. I mean, it was like, wow. Well, as they should be. I mean, you know, and I still say, Fast Times at Ridgemont High, I tell you, I can quote almost every line from that movie. It was a classic. <laughs> I don't care what anybody says. So thank you oh, for all the laughs. You. And uh, what a pleasure for me to talk to you today. And Pleasure to talk to you. Yeah, thank best you of luck for... with your grandchild and everything. That's so wonderful, Amy. Thank wow. you. Amazing. Take care. Have a great day. Thanks. You too. Okay, bye. bye.